Welcome to Popcorn Movie Recaps. Today, I will show you a 2001 action and war movie. Watch out for spoilers and take care. In Mogadishu, Southeast Africa, Mohamed Idid is the leader of the armed forces of Somalia. He would seize food supplies, kill civilians, and also wage war with anyone who tried to fight for the people of Mogadishu. The US Army deployed to help settle things, which took longer than expected. Six weeks into this, General Garrison caught Mr. Otto, who supplied guns to Idid, and assured him they wouldn't leave until they saw him. After the day's work, Tom joins the Delta Squad, and Hoot, who gave the information about Mr. Otto, gets picked up and they all go to their base. While eating the wild pig Hoot killed, a lieutenant noticed Hoot carrying a more dangerous gun without the safety on. He warned Hoot about it, but Hoot responded disrespectfully. After eating, Pilla made jokes about the Lietnant as others laughed. While he was still talking, the lieutenant they were making fun of came, which made him stop. In the next scene we see that the US Army has a Somalis who gave them intel on the people around Otto, this made Garrison map out a strategy they will use in executing their targets to get to Otto. He also gave them every detail of the weapons, grenades and missiles they would use for the mission. He also gave the code word for the mission, I win, and dispersed them. Eversman, recently appointed as the leader of his squad, quickly advised his team members before they all went and got themselves prepared for the mission at hand. Sometime by 2.29 PM that same day, the Somalis made a cross sign on his vehicle to give the US Army more precise information. He was to park in front of the target building, which he hesitated to do because he was scared of being shot to death. But after learning he wouldn't receive payment, he parked at the target building and gave the sign by opening his car bonnet. The Army did not hesitate to return the call to the base to give them a go-ahead. They all board their helicopters and vehicles as they leave on the mission. On their way, a small boy alerted the Somali Army, making them prepare for the arrival of the US Army. The US Army got to the location and was coming down the helicopter with the aid of ropes when a Somali shot an RPG at them, causing the pilot to swerve in order not to get hit. He could dodge the bullet, but Tom, who was going down the rope, fell off the rope due to how the helicopter swerved. The Somalis started shooting at them, causing the US Army to shoot back. They took Tom on a stretcher, so that they wouldn't leave anyone behind and took him back to base. The other team was also doing a great job, as they captured some of their targets and were ready to extract them. On their way back to the base, Pilla, who was the one racking jokes for them, got shot and died. The US Army was progressing in its mission and was doing great at it when a helicopter they called Black Hawk got hit and went down. The crash prompted the general to give another order to secure the crash site. The general sent Eversman and some members of his team to do this. On their way, the Somalis were waiting to ambush them, which they almost accomplished, but they got air support, which wiped out the Somalis. The US Army has a lot of killings to do because the Somalis were so many and won't die. They were so lucky that the Somalis didn't have air support, or maybe they had but were not using it. The truck that took Tom and Pilla could get back to the base as the soldiers rushed to them to evacuate the trucks. At the crash site, a helicopter was able to take the only survivor, leaving the dead pilots and other soldiers for another aircraft to carry, which was not possible because the place was so hot and raining with bullets for a helicopter to carry. The dangerous conditions led them to assign tasks to the lorry carrying the prisoners they captured to evacuate the aircraft at the crash site. On their way, the Somalis could delay them by using an RPG to hit them. The Somalis were able to take out three soldiers before the US Army left for the crash site. As the reel turns, we notice that Nelson and his friend are left behind. This makes them give themselves orders to go to the crash site and meet with the others. As they were doing this, more men were deployed at the crash site to aid the easy movement of the wounded pilots and dead soldiers. It looks like the main focus was to move the pilots at the crash site and not to capture Otto anymore because the military sent another empty helicopter to the crash site. Still, it did not get there because the Somalis hit it using an RPG. Back at the base, the soldiers got ready again and loaded their weapons with armor to secure the crash site. Nelson and his friend were lost when they met another soldier, Durant, whom they thought would know the way to the crash site, but unfortunately, he did not. As all of this was going on, snipers volunteered themselves to provide ground support, which Garrison delayed to permit them because he was scared of losing more helicopters and soldiers, but he still gave them the go-ahead. In the next scene, we see that the lorry and truck that was to take the prisoners to the army base got attacked, which got the driver's killer instantly and another soldier injured. Danny, the team leader, contacted the eyes in the sky for the next step forward but got a response saying he should go back. He had no choice but to obey. As they were going back, the Somalis were able to injure him and his driver, but they managed to follow the orders. By this time, the snipers had already gotten to the second crash site and were doing good, even though the other pilot was dead. 
Harold asks Danny if he can go back to the first crash site and help evacuate the injured and dead. But Danny has more casualties, which makes the general ask him to return to the base. At the second crash site, the snipers were trying because the Somalis were really on their asses. As they ran out of bullets, the other sniper got shot to death, leaving one sniper and the pilot. The pilot watched as they overpowered the other sniper, killed him, and came for him. As they wanted to kill him, Muhammad Aided's men came and stopped them, saying he wanted the prisoner. Danny and his team could get to the base with the needed prisoners. There were so many wounded, but they were still moving on. As we move on we see Yurik, Nelson, and Twombly trying to join the squad. They were almost successful until the Somalis noticed and attacked them, causing significant damage to Jimmy because he was losing lots of blood so fast. In the following scene at night, we see that Durant is being interrogated by the Somalis who took him hostage. He made Durant understand that even though they could capture General Ided, it wouldn't stop them from killing because it was a means of negotiation for them. Eversman and the medic tried to save Jimmy, but it was unsuccessful. As they were doing this, the Somalis attacked using missiles, but the US Army was brilliant this time and used the Somali weapon against them. As they were trying their best to get out of this, General Garrison had already requested for backup which was on its way. Sometime at 11.23 PM, the army regrouped with more weapons and left to join the war. Jimmy also left the squad as he died because he had lost too much blood. Eversman was blaming himself when they almost got surrounded by the Somalis, but air support was able to save them. Just as the air support was leaving, the UN came to the rescue of the other soldiers and took them out of the place before it went to where Eversman and his squad were. The evacuation lasted about three hours, from 2 a.m. until 5.45 a.m. The injured were so many that they could not fit in the truck they brought, which made the soldiers walk and use the truck as cover from bullets. As they were going, the Somalis chased after them, but they were able to escape on foot as they exchanged fire with the Somalis. At the base, they saw a lot of dead and injured more than they expected. Eversman saw Hoots and asked him if he was going back. Hoots said yes because there were still more men out there that he needed to retrieve, especially Durant, whom they held hostage. Eversman went to say his last goodbye to Pilla's dead body before they left for their home. Over a thousand Somalis died, and 19 American soldiers lost their lives. Eleven years later, Durant was released which made the President of the U.S. withdraw all armies the next two weeks. On August 2, 1996, Somali forces killed Mohamed Farah Idid in Mogadishu, and General Garrison retired the next day. Thanks for watching.